U.S. spacecraft to visit other planets lifted off from right here. So did Pioneer 10, the first spacecraft to travel through the asteroid belt. Surveyor 1, the first uh, spacecraft to land softly on the moon from the U.S. And lots of weather, communications, and national defense payloads popped their rides to space from Complex 36. The site saw its last launch in 2005. And the pad has stood silent for more than 10 years. Too long. We can't wait to fix that. Three point eight five million pounds of thrust combined in just sixty Range seconds green. here, as mentioned before. Go, New Glenn. GS one hydraulics internal. Never tell GS1 me the odds. Level. GS two at flight level. Autopilot enabled. <gasps> eight minus ten. Nine.
position. Both the uh, EU engines right. continue to look good. Very subjection. Same good data coming down from both stages. Great data. We're four minutes into NG2. All right, at nine minutes is when we're expecting the first stage to touch down on Jacqueline. Approximately two minutes remaining in the GS-1 coast. Thank you again, everybody, for joining us for NG-2. So far, a nominal mission. GS-2 is now 320 kilometers NG2. downrange, traveling at 2.8 kilometers per second. Trajectory we continues to look good on both burn, stages. Clean separation, clean fairing right down the middle of the range track. Engine operating perimeters on GS-2 look good. Sounds like our GS-2 is having a beautiful ride. The, uh, the NASA Escapade satellites are GS1 exposed to space now right now. And we've got GS-1 coming down for landing at T plus nine minutes. One minute remaining in the GS-1 coast. Continue to see good data coming down from both GS-1 and GS-2. Body rates on both stages look good. The 3U engines look good. Everything looking good, looking nominal. Seeing good TV scene. And on this moment on coming up is an important one. It is. We're going to... We're going to relight the BE-4 engines for the re-entry burn. Body rate out on GS-1. The exo turn is complete. There you go. It's about 300,000 feet, less than 100 kilometers up there, coming the in for a landing on the Jacklin, 375 miles offshore, waiting for the first time to land and Blue Origin's new Glenn booster short. on the Jacklin. Body rates on GS1. <gasps> that looks great. We have our booster re-entry burn. Oh, all three engines. No matter what happens next, we have had a good day. This is further than we made it on NG1. That's right. The indication of engine ignition on GS1. Continue to see good data from GS1. About a minute and a half engine parameters look good. is when we see Never Tell Me The Odds return to Earth. You see we've got a horizontal position. We've got the streaks on the base of the booster which give it lift. So we can basically fly this booster. Of course, we're using the forward fins as well, plus uh, some of our reaction control system. To, uh, as well as the gimbling on the BD4 engines to turn the rocket accordingly. On here it starts to tilt down one minute to go. Less than 40,000 feet. GS2 throttle down complete. Responsible, good.
1,600 kilometers down range, traveling at 5.9 kilometers per second. There you have it. On the right-hand side, GS2. On the left-hand side, you have our booster, our Less new Blink booster. Less than two minutes now remaining. Never Keep tell going. me the odds. Right there on the Jacqueline in the middle of that feather. Absolutely incredible. Congratulations, guys. A landed orbital rocket. What an incredible what a day. day for Blue Origin, for the space industry. These two systems continue to look good to return. I'm, I'm speechless. This is rare for me. Approximately <laughs> one this minute remaining in the burn. GS2 continues. Of course, on a nominal it's path. On a lot, on a nominal path. I, I, I need a second to catch my. Okay. <laughs> I think I heard my.